Derek Chauvin's actions as an individual cop, he did so much damage to the American police profession. I would argue being a cop today in America is tougher than probably any other time going back to the early 70s. What do you think about that statement? It certainly uh, struck home with us. Former Police Commissioner Bill Bratton, uh, L.A. and New York, issuing a powerful rebuke of the anti-crime uh, enforcement sentiment in America right now. This comes as police departments across the country deal with the surge in crime, and cops are just leaving in droves. The longest-serving commissioner in NYPD's history, uh, I would say the greatest, agrees that the state of policing is in real bad shape. But how bad? Ray Kelly joins us, former New York NYPD commissioner. Uh, Commissioner, you heard Bill Bratton, you know him. Did he overstate Derek Chauvin's impact on your profession? No, I don't think he overstated it. I think the, the impact has been tremendous trauma on the, the policing profession. We certainly haven't gotten over it, and I don't know, know when we will, if we, we ever do. Uh, it changed the public's view of policing. A lot of people said, aha, suspicions confirmed. This is how cops handle prisons when no one's around. Uh, it was a, uh, you know, a, a very important moment in the history of policing in this country. Uh, we'll see what happens with the uh, George Floyd in, in Policing Act in Washington. It, it makes major changes to policing. Uh, it's already been passed in the House, and the Senate is, is negotiating now. Uh, and one of the big provisions is the elimination of qualified immunity. That is a defense for cops to use in, uh, in federal court. Now, I know the union, certainly the national police organizations, have really digged their heels in and said that uh, th this cannot happen. We'll see how much clout they have in, uh, in the Senate and what ultimately comes out. Yeah. But, yeah, it was a very significant moment for... For America, uh, the George Floyd the killing. And the defunding expert, uh, uh, the defunding move is happening all across the country. And the response is, uh, Commissioner, is that a lot of cops are turning in the badge. Have you ever seen yep. this uh, like we're seeing now? Have you ever seen it at this point? This reminds you of the 70s, reminds you of the 80s. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. They have over 5,000 New York City police officers who have retired or put their papers in, as they call it to retire in the last year, year and a half. And this is a national phenomenon. And, of course, it really impacts on recruiting. Uh, departments throughout the country can't recruit certainly qualified people. They may get some individuals who want to become police officers. The question is, what is the quality of those uh, folks that they're, they're hiring? I've never seen anything uh, like this. Cops feel that they're under siege. Cops feel that they get no support. I talked to to a lot of them, they're backing off from doing sort of the standard police-type work right. that they, they did, they always did. But now their careers, their, their jobs, their family's well-being is at risk. And <laughs> they're, they're making the decision not to engage. And that, that, of course, ultimately hurts all of us. Police precincts have been given up in Seattle, given up in Minnesota because the people outside were protesting some of the worst decisions by mayors and others you can imagine. It shows a vulnerability. Then we're seeing this video from over the weekend in uh, Chicago where 50 were shot the other day, and they're jumping on the cop car while it rolls through the street, twerking and doing this dancing. I, couldn't Im I can't imagine even walking up to a cop car and saying something uh, accusatory, let alone doing something like that. That. What is your response to seeing this? Just imagine if those cops did something to get those women off the car. That would have been a much bigger story. It's incredible. Cops get no respect uh, anymore. That, that was shocking to me, and I've been around uh, right. a long time. You see these incidents with people pouring water on, on cops. There is simply no respect. So they see the world as being pretty much against them. Uh, they're not getting support from management. They're not getting support from politicians. And they're being disrespected. They're being demonized. They're being stigmatized virtually every day through the, through the mass media. So it is a very, very difficult time to be a, a police officer. And it kind of uh, makes you understand why the retirement numbers are as high as yeah. they are. And you don't do it. You don't how, do it to get how rich. Difficult the recruiting is. Yeah, you do. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, Eric Adams is now leading the race in New York because 46 percent of the people say they're voting because the person who gets this job uh, will be good at tackling crime. 
tackling crime. Eric Adams has a law enforcement background, but you're not a fan. Why? Well, I, I'm not certain he has the gravitas to, for a big, big job where you have 350,000 uh, em, employees. Uh, he now says he's going to be uh, very much uh, a, a crime fighter. Uh, that was never the position that uh, he took during his time in the NYPD and during his time in the state uh, Senate and during the time as a Brooklyn Borough president. So. If he wins, we'll have to see. We hope that he's a, he's a man of his word. Right, that he's going to crack down on crime, but from his track record, you don't feel that way. Well, I don't think he's shown it so far. And, uh, you know, people can change. People can grow into a job. We'll have to see what, what happens if, in fact, he gets elected. It's a very confusing uh, situation. You, you have forced choices, so to speak. There are eight candidates. You, can, you actually rank five of those eight candidates. And it's the first time it's ever been done in New York City, and uh, there's just a lot of confusion over it. So we'll have to see when the smoke settles. I don't think we will know who the winner is for probably at least uh, a week or more after Election Day. But the ramifications will felt. It's hard to imagine us worse off than we are with Mayor de Blasio for the last eight years. He's been absolutely awful. Uh, and I don't think Agreed. you're going to argue with me on that. Uh, Commissioner Ray Kelly, no I, I wish you had run, but I guess uh, you're smart not to. Uh, Commissioner, thanks so much. Great to be with you, Brian. Thank you. You got it. Talk to you soon.